Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have ELW 537, On Our Way Rejoicing. And this hymn is a short hymn, but I'd like to start with the text first by John Monsell. Or Monsell, I'm not sure. But the text was composed for the first Sunday after Trinity. So the fact we're singing it in Epiphany uh, is a little different, but just so you know, that's what it was composed for. And initially, uh, it was different than what we see here in the hymnal. It also has two additional verses. And uh, part of the first verse was then what became, as we see here, the refrain, on our way rejoicing, as we forward move, hearken to our praises, O bless God of love. Now what's interesting here is that it was re... As far as I know, this, was, this revision was made so it could be a pro, pro sessional. So going into the service, this, however, is listed in the hymnal under sending. So it just reminds us again that these titles can be a guide, but they should not be the final gavel, <laughs> saying that very comically, uh, to decide where these hymns fit. This is not always a sending hymn. And in fact, it was uh, on our way rejoicing as we, uh, sometimes it says homeward move or onward move. Uh, so it would say onward move. Here, as you can see, the text changed to as we forward move. So there's no, uh, no reason why we can't think of beginning as part of leaving. And that's why I'd like to encourage us to think this week as we sing this at the end of the service, we're leaving, right? But that's just the beginning. So that's just as important as a processional. It's the beginning of going out and doing the ministry and the work of Jesus. So great connection there, even though I didn't intend uh, that to happen. But that's, that's the beauty of hymnody. These things just come out of nothing sometimes. Uh, so that's enough, I think, about the text. Music, we've seen Havergal before, Francis Havergal. Uh, this is... Uh, you can see lots of dotted rhythms again, bringing the joyful aspect of music out of it. Uh, but uh, she, as you can see her dates here, 1836 to 1879, around 1850, after the school she was attending, uh, that's when she really gave, as she says, her soul over to Jesus Christ. And from that point on, she kept writing. She did children's tracts. She was also engaged in philanthropy, lots of caring and nourishing. Uh, tons of hymn texts, and they tended to be published after she passed away. Uh, she had a very quiet life, um, did struggle with her health, and we've talked about that, I think, a bit in the past in some of the Hymn of the Weeks. Uh, but nevertheless, with her dad being a pastor, she did um, really represent a great, if we want to say the stepping stone, to other hymn writers uh, with the way she would connect that sense of caring and nourishing into her texts. And even though we only have two verses here, it's uh, very clear that this is about God being in control, uh, but also really questioning. It's always great when there's a question in the text. Who, if we be faithful, can our hope destroy? So if we remain faithful to Christ, then hope springs eternal. It lives on. And, you know, so here we go. Uh, on our way rejoicing.
uh, just remember again, like I said earlier, even though it was uh, revised for a processional, there's no reason why we can't combine that understanding into ascending him that it begins as we leave. Uh, things change as we go out into the world, and it's a beginning of ministry as well. Thank you for listening to Hymn of the Week.